first I thought I was dreaming. Everybody that ran by me died. I heard my husband, you know, screaming, yelling. They were screaming and running, throwing their arms up in the air. My mind just went blank. I stood for like a, a few seconds and then I fell on the floor. You could see that smoke rolling. I mean, like I said, it was like a tidal wave. You can see, you can feel its heat, it's crackling. It was just clouds of gray, black, thick. As fast as I can crawl, the heat was there. It was a matter of seconds and my kid would have been dead. The feelings were like, this can't be real. This isn't happening to us. The voices you just heard are voices of people who never dreamed they would ever be in a fire. They survived because they planned to get out alive. Some simply were lucky, just like the people in this apartment. The flames would swept through the building that was here left these 50 homeless. It also left four dead, including a 14-month-old girl. Some people survived because they knew what to do when the fire struck. One family used the door to save their lives. Another man went back into the smoke. He died. 15 of the residents were saved because they had smoke detectors. But luck is just not enough. Because this year, 60,000 Americans will be severely burned in fires. And 6,000 of you will die in fires. That's because you were never brought up to understand what a real fire is really like. Now, what you're about to see might frighten you, but remember this. Fear and respect of fires could save your life. It's already saved hundreds of lives, and that's why McDonald's, First Alert, and WCBS-TV are bringing you this. Plan to get out alive. So what can you expect if you're in a fire? There are four basic facts you must learn if you are to survive a fire. First, a fire is black. You won't be able to see in a fire. Second, the smoke and the gas will kill you, not the flames. Third, the heat is so intense it defies description. The heat alone will kill you. And fourth, time. You have no time in a fire. You must get out. Let's take fact number one. If you've never been in a fire before, this will come as a complete shock to you. If you think this is what a real fire is, you're dead wrong. It's what the movies and television have led you to believe a fire is like. They have to do it with enough smoke and fire so you can see the action and the drama. But a real fire is this. The same scene, screaming, noise, burning, panic, the blackness. In a real fire, you are blind. To your horror, you will learn that in a real fire, you cannot see. Fire is black. It is not light. Black isn't even, it wasn't even a color black. I couldn't see my hands in front of me. You see nothing. You just feel heat and cracking. It's extremely dark. It's hot. It's scary. Sooner or later, according to statistics, each one of us will experience the terror of a serious fire. What's it feel like? First, forget about what you think a fire is like. Let us take you into a fire. It's frightening. To help you survive if it happens to you, we went to the New York City Fire Department Training Center, where firemen are taught to survive. This is part of what a fire is really like. Can you see me? To the left. I, I, I'm totally disoriented now, and I've only come in... What? Okay, now I want to stand here for a minute to see... Whoops, I'm hitting something. Okay, I can see what you mean. I have to feel around. Let, let, let me just turn toward the camera, uh, where my cameraman, Nick Fisher, is. He's somewhere in front of me. Nick, I don't know whether you can see me. I, I, I can see a light over a camera, and you're about, what, a foot away from me. You're less than a foot. You're right on top of me. And I can't, I can't, uh, there, okay, I see the front of the camera now. Now I'm going to turn back toward the fire. I feel the heat is coming. Now, I just walked, I just walked into the wall here. Good God. But I'm totally, I, it feels good to see the fire. It's crazy as it seems because it gives me a point of reference. That other room frightened the hell out of me because I had no way of, it was like being an astronaut in space. Yeah, I didn't know if I was upside down. I, I'd never find a door in this. Uh, 
Okay, I, I can feel the wall. I, I just can't imagine how terrible it would be to be inside a room like that without anyone with me, with total disorientation, not being able to see it or feel any, anything. It's, uh, it's total panic. You know, before this, I always thought that fire meant light. It's not. It's black. It's, it's, it's a panicky black, and, and it's hard to describe. And only somebody who's been in the fire could tell you what it feels like. So the first fact you must know about a fire to survive is that it's dark. It's not light. Expect not to see. It will be pitch black. The second thing you must learn is the danger of smoke and gas. This car with its motor running is pumping out carbon monoxide into an enclosed garage. Carbon monoxide is invisible and it's odorless. It will put you into a deep, deep sleep and kill you. But I'm wearing a firefighter's air mask. But this is the same carbon monoxide that's mixed in the smoke that you breathe in fires. And in a fire, you'll never stand a chance. You're sound asleep. It's the middle of the night. And a fire breaks out in your home. This acrid, noxious cloud of burning plastics and rubber comes pouring into your bedroom. Do you think you'd wake up? Do you think you'd smell the smoke and take action? Well, I guess I'd call the fire department. I would wake up, I would wake my family, and I would pray that the elevators were working and get the hell out. I have a terrible nose, but that I would smell. But the frightening fact is, the smell of the smoke would not wake you up. If anything, it would put you into a deeper sleep. Most victims awake or asleep in a fire will die from the smoke and gas inhalation. They will not die from the flames. Those who survived know the tragic effects of smoke and gas. The, the smoke poured in then, it was like a tidal wave. It was just like a big wave. My two sons were overcome by the, the fumes. They died in their sleep. 90% of the people we run into look like they're asleep, except their faces are dirty from the soot because they've died from the gases. If you ran out into the smoke-filled hallway, not only would you not be able to see, but you couldn't breathe. It's like holding your head underwater, like drowning. Now you add to the smoke the invisible gas, carbon monoxide. It's in every fire. It's odorless. It numbs your brain. It puts you into a deep sleep, just as an anesthetic would. At first, I thought I was dreaming. I know that I couldn't move my arms and my legs. And it was terrifying at first. It was because I didn't... I've never been in a situation like that before. I've never been in a situation where I physically couldn't move when I wanted to, and it was, it was, it was downright scary. He would have been a victim, but his father pulled him out of the fire. The lesson here is simple. In most cases, it's not the flames that will kill you, it's the smoke and the gas. Because when you are asleep, you can smell the smoke. You lose your sense of smell. And that's why the noise of a smoke detector is your first line of defense. The third fact you must learn to deal with is the heat. Your body simply stops functioning. You die within seconds from the heat alone. It is indescribable. It hits you like, like being hit by a Mack truck. It, it, it's so hot that there's no way to explain it. Watch what happens in a specially controlled fire. The couch is burning. At 150 degrees, your body will stop working. Your lungs will literally vaporize. You fall unconscious. In this living room, the fire has been underway for slightly over a minute. And the temperature in that smoke layer is an unbelievable 700 degrees instant death if you stuck your head into that smoke unprotected the heat in a fire is mind-boggling as fast as i can crawl the heat was there and the bottom of my shoes were melted the heat was so intense that it cracked the porcelain utilities in the upstairs bathroom if you breathe air that's 150 degrees it would scorch your lungs and kill you instantly overhead in the darkness it's well over 600 degrees. It's hot enough up there to melt wiring and plumbing. Let us show you how hot a fire can really get. Watch the heat in this room build to explosive heights. What you see happening here is called a flashover. The intense heat reaches a point where almost everything in the room is burning. The temperature is now hundreds of degrees, and the smoke itself is ready to ignite blowing out the entire structure. There's no chance at all of survival in this heat. So fact number three is the heat. It is mind-boggling. 
The heat alone kills in seconds. One breath of superheated air can destroy your lungs. Fact number four, time. Most people think they have time in a fire, but in a fire, there is no time. The front windows blew out and it swept that wall of flames right up that hall. It was a matter of seconds and my kids would have been dead. I smelled smoke. We went back to get the dog and a few valuables and by the time we went back, it was too late. We couldn't get out. Here's what we mean by time. A wastebasket fire begins. It's undetected. Within a minute, the sofa is on fire and the smoke is beginning to fill the room. But it hasn't set off the smoke detector in the next room. Upstairs, there's no warning yet. Downstairs, the heat is intense enough to knock you unconscious if you try to enter. Now, it's two minutes into the fire. The smoke detector goes off. This is your first warning there's a fire. The smoke pours upstairs. Downstairs, it's now three minutes. The room is fully involved. The thick, choking smoke is lowered. Nobody would survive in this room. Now, it's four minutes into the fire. The upstairs and downstairs hallways are impassable. If you didn't have an escape plan, you're trapped. It's been only two minutes since the smoke detector sounded the alarm. In all, it took five minutes after the fire started for the gas, smoke, and heat inside the house to kill everyone. In two to five minutes, forget it. It's all over. So it turns out that time may be your biggest enemy in a fire. You may have less than a minute or two to get your family out safely. So there you have it. Basic facts which most Americans don't know. One, a fire is black, it is not light. You will not be able to see in a fire, expect that. Two, the smoke and the gas in a fire will kill you, not the flames. Three, the heat is so intense your body simply shuts down. You will die within seconds. And four, time, you have no time in a fire, you must get out. If you know these four basic facts, you can plan to get out alive. Let's see how you respond to these common fire situations. How would you respond to this common accident in the kitchen, a grease fire? Would you reach for a lid cover if it were handy and place it over the flames? Or would you pour baking soda on the flames? Would you use a fire extinguisher? Or would you use water? I would use baking soda. I would put a lid on it. The baking soda, I think, works if you don't have a fire extinguisher. The correct way to deal with a grease fire Use a lid cover, baking soda, or fire extinguisher. How well do they work? Watch. The lid cover removes the supply of oxygen that the fire needs, and the flames die down quickly. Know where the baking soda is handy, and pour it over the flames. You may expect a slight flare-up, but keep pouring, and the fire will die. A fire extinguisher will quickly douse the flames, and the newer fire extinguishers cause very little mess. The one thing you don't want to do is to throw water on a grease fire. Watch what happens if I do. This kitchen fire is now getting out of control. In your home, how long do you think it would take for this same fire to get out of control? Do you think it would take 30 seconds? Do you think it would take a minute? Do you think it would take five minutes? Or do you think it would take 10 minutes? What do you think? Most people think they have at least five minutes or more, but that's wrong. The correct answer, you may have no more than 30 seconds before the fire gets out of control. The advice is get out of the kitchen, alert the family, leave the building, call a fire department from outside the building, don't go back into the house or apartment, wait for the firefighters to arrive and take over. In the wrong hands, a match or a cigarette lighter can kill. For parents, consider this interesting question. Which do you think would be more dangerous in the hands of a child? A loaded 38 or a cigarette lighter? Think about it for a moment. It's a question that Fire Marshal Charlie Wagner must answer every night when he comes home from work. He locks his gun and his lighter in a drawer. This is more dangerous than a loaded 38 revolver placed on a kitchen table in front of a child. This is more dangerous because this can kill dozens of people. Children are intrigued by fire blowing out matches or candles. Ask your youngster where the matches are kept and you may be in for a surprise. They're in the kitchen on top drawer. She gives them on the counter in the cookie jar. They're on the counter next to the refrigerator in the kitchen. Here's a question. Children killed from playing with matches and lighters are usually how old? Three years, six years, or nine years? 
The answer shocks many. It's toddlers, usually around the age of three, killed while playing with lighters and matches. Children don't mean to kill with matches, nor do careless smokers mean to kill with cigarettes, yet both do. Question, true or false? Most fires caused by careless smoking are in the bedroom. I think it's true because people probably fall asleep in bed, the cigarette hits the mattress and smokes.